black holes pull everything inside they see. You'd better not approach the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. It's extremely hazardous. The Sun is yellow. All these statements seem to be universally believed, but are they true? No. Let me tell you the real truth. When you look at the images of the Sun, it may seem that our star is on fire. But in reality, the process of burning needs three components – heat, fuel, and oxygen. The Sun does have some fuel since it's mostly made up of hydrogen and helium, and the former is highly flammable. The star also produces enormous amounts of heat energy, but there's no oxygen in space. So as you see, the fire triangle remains incomplete. So instead, the heat and light the Sun generates are the result of thermonuclear fusion. Now about those black holes. You probably know that their gravitational pull is so powerful that not even light can escape their clutches. In other words, you might be imagining a black hole as a giant cosmic vacuum cleaner clearing vast areas of space. But in reality, black holes behave just like any other supermassive object in the universe. The speed you need to escape from the gravitational pull of an object, be it a black hole or a planet, is known as the escape velocity. If we take our Sun, which has a relatively modest gravitational pull, you'd need to travel at a speed of 384 miles per second to get away from it. If your spaceship couldn't achieve this speed, you'd fall back down to the surface of the Sun. But at the event horizon, aka the point of no return of a black hole, even something traveling at the speed of light wouldn't be fast enough to get away. And still, if there was an object that could move more quickly than the speed of light, it would most likely manage to escape, even if it had already crossed the event horizon. The asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter isn't a region of hectically moving and constantly colliding large rocks. If you ever found yourself there, you would see how empty and calm it is. The asteroids are so far apart from each other that the chances of collision are laughably small. If you were traveling by spaceship, its radar would easily detect asteroids and would help you avoid them. The vacuum of space is not always cold. It depends on where you measure its temperature. If it's a totally dark, freezing cold part of our universe, the vacuum of space can get as cold as minus 454 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you travel closer to the sun, your thermometer will show a boiling 250 degrees Fahrenheit. The sun seems to be yellow, which is confirmed by the photos of our star. But it's just an illusion. The sun produces all wavelengths of visible light. That's why its true color is white. But when sunlight travels through Earth's atmosphere, it changes. The wavelengths of light at the blue end of the spectrum are way shorter than those at the red. That's why collisions with particles in the air are more likely. That's why during the day, blue light scatters pretty high in the atmosphere, hence the trademark blue color of the sky. That's also the reason why the sun looks yellow. Comets' tails always show which way they're heading, right? Well, it's not that easy. These space travelers are essentially lumps of dirty ice. While approaching the sun, they heat up, releasing dust and gas. If it was happening on Earth, we could expect the resulting tail to point backwards. But in space, there's no air. And since comets are shaped and blown by solar winds and radiation pressure, their tails always point away from the sun. It happens like this. High energy ultraviolet light collides with the evaporating gas of the comet, taking away electrons and producing charged ions. They get caught up in magnetic field lines and dash away from the sun in a beautiful blue ion tail. Mount Everest is considered to be the tallest mountain on Earth, but it's only true if we speak about its height above sea level. If we take base to summit height, the tallest peak on the planet is Mauna Kea on the Hawaiian Islands. 
Everest rises 29,035 feet above sea level. For Mauna Kea, this number is a mere 13,800 feet. But a large part of it is submerged, and the mountain's total height is 33,500 feet. That's almost taller than Everest. Our planet does not orbit around the sun. What's going on is the sun, Earth, and all other planets moving around the common center of mass of the solar system. It's indeed very close to the sun, but not exactly at the center of the star. When people think of ringed planets, the first thing that comes to their mind is Saturn. But this gas giant isn't the only planet with rings in the solar system. Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune all have their own sets of rings, but they're much thinner and not so visible from Earth. But even though Saturn can boast the most impressive rings out there, Neptune's moon Triton may be torn apart by tidal forces in the next 100 million years. If it happens, Neptune will have a dramatic new ring system of its own. Despite a common misconception, Earth is not quite round. Isaac Newton first suggested that Earth was not a perfect sphere in 1687. And like many of his other ideas, it turned out to be true. Basically, we live on a squashed soccer ball. The world is flatter at the top and bottom and bulges out a bit in the middle. But the difference isn't all that great. So this belly is really tiny considering Earth's size. This unusual shape is caused by the way Earth spins. The moon doesn't really have a dark side. This natural satellite is tidally locked with Earth. That's why we always just see one side of it. There's a misconception that volcanism makes tectonic plates move by pushing them apart. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Tectonic plates' older edges are denser and cooler. This eventually causes them to sink deeper into the mantle of our planet. When two tectonic plates get pulled apart during this process, ocean ridges appear. It also results in volcanism. It's not the moon's gravity that causes the tides. Earth's natural satellite does pull on the water in the oceans, but this tug is more than 10 million times weaker than the gravitational pull of our planet. What creates the tidal force is the gravity interplay between Earth, the moon, and the sun. Plus, it's more of a push than a pull. Is Mercury the hottest planet in the solar system? It seems logical. Mercury is the closest to the sun. Therefore, its surface temperature must be higher than that of all of the other planets. But in reality, the hottest planet in the solar system is Venus. Despite the fact that it's more than 30 million miles further away from the sun than its neighbor, the average temperature on Mercury is around 333 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas it can reach 867 degrees Fahrenheit on Venus. The reason for this is Venus's atmosphere. Mercury has practically no atmosphere, whereas Venus has a very thick one made up almost entirely of carbon dioxide. This creates a strong greenhouse effect, trapping all the sun's heat and making Venus incredibly hot. There's another myth that claims that a human would explode in space without a spacesuit. In reality, our skin is flexible enough to keep all of our internal organs in place. But in the absence of external pressure in space, the blood in the human body would boil. As a result, the body would expand in size, but it definitely wouldn't explode. And the main problem for a person without a spacesuit would be the lack of oxygen. 